Hi, my name is Łukasz from Enter FEA and with Tony Abe from FE Training. Uh, I wanted to talk about mathematics in FEA today, which I think is like a very interesting topic. And there are a lot of controversy around it, which makes it fun. So the question that I hope we'll at least tackle today and maybe even answer is, do you really need to know a lot of mathematics to use FEA efficiently in design space? So what do you think about that, Tony? Well, probably as a poor mathematician, I would I would have to be forced to agree with you. Um, my mathematics is, is not strong. It's always been, uh, I've always got by with mathematics. So I think I, I would uh, I would tend to side with you, Lucas. I always admire people that have a mathematical mind. Um, I hope I have an engineering mind. Um, and I think sometimes the two are different. So I, I would uh, I would agree with you. I think you know we need to hear a little bit more about your kind of your thesis. But uh, in, broadly, yeah, um, you don't. From my own perspective, I've been a, I hope a reasonable analyst for an engineer for forty years with this limited mathematical ability. So maybe that answers the question right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really like how you make a distinction between the mathematical mind and engineering mind, because I think that yeah. we should really, with this topic, make a certain distinction is what do you want to use mathematics for? I mean, like we all can subtract, multiply and divide. I'm even good with square roots when it comes to that. But uh, I think that when you use mathematics to estimate the outcomes, for instance, and do whatever engineering design you feel you should do, that's like a very required skill to have. But when you go into this very high matrix operations, nonlinear calculation, mathematics stuff, I don't even know the names of the symbols in textbooks, not to mention understanding what they do. So I think that with this distinction, one should say that the practical engineering knowledge, so being able to estimate the outcome, is critical. Wouldn't you agree? So, so I think uh, the point you made about, um, you know, when we're talking about mathematics, there's a distinction between the really advanced deep theory, the impenetrable kind of page after page of textbook stuff, and then the stuff you'd find like in Rook, um, in uh, Rourke's formula for stress and strain, or any other kind of hand calculation or we just said sigma equals m y over i. That's mathematics, but you know we all expect to to know that and understand it. So there's a distinction. There's kind of a um, straightforward kind of I call it like hacking engineer level of understanding mathematics. But then there's the deep impenetrable stuff. And I must admit, I think it sometimes there's an over um, emphasis on the advanced mathematics. My particular case, for example, I, I've got a whole collection of books behind me and uh, i do honestly read them i attempt to read them all and it's not a, just a giant photo um, <laughs> as we were joking earlier. um so um some of them i can't get more than about three chapters in because for me tensor notation um as soon as somebody's to explain something through tensor notation i get that it's an elegant and precise way of defining something like non-linear example uh, non-linear non plasticity for example it can be beautifully described by a series of equations and um, the tensor notation. But the trouble is they've left me behind. I'm not in that club. <laughs> <laughs> I can move up to it slowly, maybe through matrix notation, but even then, you know, I kind of reached my limit. I always remember my master's um, degree. Uh, we did uh, complex, uh, we, we did potential flow, uh, basically, um, uh, the stresses around a, a plate with a hole in it and things like that. And the starting equation was delta the fourth phi equals zero. And that's it. That's your lot. That's your starting point. And then you start to bring the boundary conditions and everything. And I think we spent about eight weeks slogging yeah. through that. And, you know, it, I look at it and think, okay, I can look up a textbook. I can see the results. I can see the results plotted. So there, there is, there's a kind of a gray area, and I think it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to depend on the person, isn't it? Because, well, I mean, definitely. Uh, I, for one, yeah. when I had to do equations in strength of material, the hardcore ones that you do at university, at one point in my life, I learned by heart four A4 pages of differential equation uh, because it was, like, too difficult for me. So I, I basically learned it like a poem, and I actually got this question on an exam, and I have an A which makes me very proud that it was completely useless, obviously. So I, I think that 
what I would say is that the part of mathematics that you use in engineering judgment, like I, I don't even dare to call this like mathematics because most of the time you mm. just multiply, add, subtract and divide numbers. But you need to know which numbers to divide and what to subtract from what. So I would say that the mat mathematics that you need is so basic that it's absurd. But it doesn't mean that the calculations are simple. They are actually pretty difficult because it, it, those require you to know what you want to do and how, how to calculate mm -hmm. that, right? And this is something I believe everybody involved in FEA should have. It's like a skill to estimate outcomes. A few days ago, I actually found out that I misclicked in FEMA and while I was doing load data surface, like one coordinate was off, and I was like, I would never found it when I was like, you know, someone handed me the model and say like, search for a mistake. Like it was unfoundable by all means. But since I was checking outcomes by hand, I saw like, okay, everything is nice, nice, nice. Wait, this doesn't work. So I was searching for a particular thing and I found it. So if I wasn't able to estimate the outcome I should get from FEA with hand calculations, even within reasonable accuracy, like 20, 50%, whatever, but at least I understand what I should get. This gives me a certain power over what I do. But it doesn't mean I know how the solver iterates solutions and how the matrix operations are done inside the software that allow to calculate right. for, for whatever I want to do. I guess a good analogy is um, if um, you, can, you can drive a motor car, you can drive a motor car efficiently, effectively, and so on, but you don't have to know every aspect of that of, of the operation of the motor vehicle. You don't have to know the combustion sequence. Uh, uh, and these days, particularly like with computer controls and all the rest of it in, in, your, in your car, it's becoming that, that way anyway. But you know how to drive that effectively and efficiently. But I think in the same way, you want to know when you're running out of fuel. So you want to know what to look for there. Um, and maybe uh, I would say like pop the bonnet or the hood um, and check you know, the battery condition, check oil and you know basic things like that. So, um, although we might not understand, um, for example, if we take, uh, we were talking about snap through buckling the other day, um, I couldn't derive the Rick's, uh, solution. I couldn't derive the Crisfield equation. Nope. Um, I can't, I can't even really follow it very well, but I understand the implications of the two. And I think that's probably the important point. The mass is there. The mass is very important. Somebody has slogged through and, and God bless them. They've actually, oh. you know, done that and then achieve that which is an amazing uh, result but you know we don't all have to be able to follow that but the implications often of using this method this method or this method i think that's important so i think having a good handle of what my mum used to call sums she used to look at my what i call mathematics and say you know bring out my homework from the degree course kind of thing she'd say on the on the break she'd say are you doing sums again no mum, it's mathematics but really i think maybe your description is a good one maybe engineering checks are more like sums um advanced oh, yeah. mathematics advanced theory somebody's got to do it I'm glad they've done it we need to know the implications of these but we don't have to kind of follow them all yeah. so something i think i would also add is that um i've been doing engineering a long time now sometimes mathematical equations have taken me literally 10 15 years to absorb and for example, um, when I do that buck, buckling, uh, sorry, snap through problem, I actually come up with, um, actually it's a variant of that problem, I actually come up with a closed form solution. And it, and it stretches me and I, it stretches, you know, the people on my course, but I've, I've done it enough times, it actually is beginning to make some kind of sense to me as an equation. First thing I do with equations, I put it into an Excel spreadsheet and say, what does it look like? With that one, I can actually see the form of the response, the force versus deflection curve, see where the terms are coming in from the mathematics. So sometimes with patience and with perseverance, mathematics can, the mathematics can kind of creep up on you. And it's literally, I've been the case sometimes, it's taken me maybe even 20 years. You know what? By looking at this long enough, looking at the graphs of this, looking at the form of the equation, I begin to understand how it all goes together. So I think that would be a message I'd give to people kind of starting out, you know, it, 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 some, of, some of it will always remain impenetrable, but some sure. of it kind of grows, sort of grows on you. Well, Have you come across that? I think that if you really want to learn something, start teaching it, 
that's so cool. Like when you start PhD <laughs> research and they just push you yeah. into the classroom and say, like, you know, tell those guys how to do it. And it's like, I don't know how to do it. Like, relax, just tell them. And after, like, I learned myself that, especially when something is difficult, when I talk during class, uh, I had a professor who used to say that, wow, today I'm explaining this really well because even I understood something. <laughs> and and I, I was always thinking that he was joking. And I distinctively remember several times in my life when I was actually explaining something. And it came to me like, wow, now I understand it a bit more. So there, there's definitely something there. But I would also like to go back to the car analogy because I love it as well. And what I would add to, uh, like to add to it is that I would say that people doing FEA are divided be on, between like mechanics and drivers. And it, you cannot say which one of those groups is quote unquote better. Like you can be a race driver and you can be like a wonderful mechanic and both are great. However, for whatever reason, books are mostly written to mechanics. So when you want to learn FEA, usually what people assume is that you want to write your own solver. So they will punch you with all the mathematics involved. And you start to, feel, start to feel dumb because you don't understand what you're reading. While, in fact, you don't want to know how to build an engine. That's, that's not something you're after, assuming, of course, that it's not. And then I would say, like, instead, just sit in a car, drive around, do your driving license, learn, like, the rules, the traffic rules, but mm. also how to check if your car is okay or not. Because, as you said, mm. like, checking the most basic stuff is critical. You need to know how to do it. But I think that for whatever reason, books are mostly about equations, mostly because scientists write, write books, because like that's the kind mm. of the job, and they do mostly the, the mechanical parts of FEA, let's call it this way. So I think there's something there to be said as well. And if you want to write your own solver, then this mathematics is critically important, and there is no doubt about that. You need to know every detail, because otherwise you won't be able to code the solver that does the job properly. But if you want to use the solver someone else did, it's, it's like a completely different skill set, I think. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. It, it depends really um, where you are in the whole industry, as you say. If you're, if you're a top-flight academic who's researching new areas, then you, you probably it's essential you have that mathematical grip. If you're an experienced analyst, maybe you know a little bit more of mathematics. But again, hopefully the engineering is there. If you're a design engineer moving into uh, FEA, then the mathematics is going to be um, sometimes tough. It's going to be a long time perhaps since you, you did maths. It wasn't something you kind of really focused on. So I think, again, the level of mathematics you need to adopt is, is um, it varies. But I think it's like, again, that car analogy. Um, if I remember when I used to do the, the UK driving test, I used to tell you how your braking distance uh, different speeds. And they did it in terms of buses, you know, the old London bus. So yeah. they'd say, okay, if you're traveling at 50 miles an hour, I can't remember what it is now, sadly, but like 10 London buses. So they're saying that we're not giving you the equation of the braking uh, distance because who's going to remember that when, you know, th there's a car in front of me. Uh, is this equation so going to stop quickly enough? But it may be the, the memory of the London buses, you know, is more of a, a kind of a, an analogy. So uh, I would say, our, the analogy of kind of building up to is like for a design engineer, know what that stopping distance is, know what the traps are, the pitfalls at the kind of the basic level without necessarily knowing the detail of the underlying, underlying mathematics. But the, the effect, which is you're going to hit something if you don't hit that break quickly enough, is is the same kind of analogy in, in FE analysis. If you're particularly like a design engineer coming to FE analysis or somebody's just a bit rusty about maths, or never like mathematics. I often find when I teach the intro to FEA class, um, we use just simple mathematics to build up a, a stiffness matrix, a rod. We build up three rods, invert yeah. that. And it's usually at that point you'd say to people, does this look familiar, this matrix operation? And I always say to people that, you know, they're a bit rusty or they might never have seen it. Go and get a basic book on matrix manipulation, you know, and um, don't don't kind of be shy or whatever. It that I think is a perhaps an important level. Just what is a matrix? What are simple manipulations? Because that's so much of our kind of like our, our building 
a building block. So I think that's the only bit of mathematical advice I would say you, you where you'd perhaps stretch people a little bit, not deep level, but just what is a matrix? How do we assemble a matrix? Maybe how we, you know, not the detail of inversion, but what is a matrix inversion and so on. And that, that would probably be about it as well as our, we talked about our sums, as my mom would say, yeah. our basic <laughs> P over A and Y over I and all those kind of things that we would be using day in, day out. So, um, yeah, I think that's, that's where I stand. Um, I think, um, I think we're, we're in agreement. Uh, I'm glad to hear as, as an academic background, you have your limits as well. I was, <laughs> I always worried, I always feel, uh, humble when I think, you know, these people that can just quote, um, again, uh, tense notation off the top of the head. I always feel, wow, you know, this is a special kind of people that oh, can yeah. do this. Yeah. Uh, no worries. I won't quote any tensor notation from my head. That's not my skill set. Uh, so basically, you can easily do a PhD in practical engineering without knowing that, and it's all fine. So yeah, I, I don't really feel like super dumb for not knowing the mathematics, because I think that like there are other things and other skills you might have instead. Because as someone was, uh, once asked me, why don't you learn that? And I said, like, look, I can I can like sacrifice few years, but instead of learning those advanced mathematics, I can learn something else that I will be able to use more efficiently in design, like nonlinear FEA or whatever else, right? Mm. So there, are, there is always a trade-off. And I think this is what stops me from learning the advanced mathematics, that I will learn something else instead that I think will be more useful, simply because I never aimed at writing my own solver. So I think that like to wrap up, I would say that you definitely need to have a good engineering skill, like be able to calculate what the outcome should be. However, I don't really associate that with mathematics, even though you use mathematics. Mm -hmm. This is rather engineering in general. And when it comes to, yeah. to like the complex advanced stuff, I would say that if you know like very basics, great for you, like anything else, like super cool. But I spent like 10 years of my career designing a lot of things with nonlinear FEA, and I don't know those. So clearly it works without that as well. And I think that's, that's a good message to leave, that you don't really have to go for, through Chris Field's volume to understanding everything to be able to do nonlinear FEA. And, and that's, that's an important point, I think. Um, so so we, we, we're going to be leading, always leading with the engineering and then whatever maths oh, comes definitely. along in its wake. Yeah. So Tony, when, where people can find you online if they want to check out all the cool stuff you do for FEA materials and others? Okay, so my website is uh, www.fetraining.net and that should be appearing, uh, yeah. I think, below us. We've agreed on our format, uh, so below us. Um, also find me on LinkedIn. So I think, again, we have a little LinkedIn logos there. Please feel free to, to connect up. Yeah. Um, my website has lots of free resource and so on. So again, Feel free to do that. If you feel like diving into uh, any FEA training, uh, I partner with NAFEMS, and again, we'll give a link down below where you can hook up and look at that variety of um, of training courses. Wonderful. So I'm going to say, uh, again, another nice conversation. Enjoyed that, uh, Lucas. Uh, I'll leave you to uh, explain um, where people get hold of you. And so from me, bye-bye, okay. everybody. So if you want to learn FEA, uh, you can always go to my blog, where I publish a lot of materials regarding this, and you can definitely find something useful there. I also have a few free courses, so you can sign up for those and learn something useful. And if you want, you can also test your FEA skills because I prepared a nice FEA quiz, which should be fun. So I will provide all the links below. See you around.